This is rental car number 136, and today I'm driving the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta SE. SE being the trim level. There's actually five on the Jetta this year, and SE is the second to lowest, but don't worry. There's still plenty of good stuff to talk about this car. Uh, the Jetta is a compact car that retails for around $23,000, and Volkswagen's actually been making the Jetta since 1979, so it's been around for quite some time. And this is the seventh generation of the Jetta, so it's the first vehicle in that new generation. And I kind of like the front end of this vehicle. It reminds me a little bit of the new Hyundai Accent, which I'm also a fan of. Uh, but anyway, let's get down to brass tacks by talking about what's under the hood. We get a 1.4 liter inline four cylinder engine. You also get yourself an eight speed automatic transmission with sport mode capability. That's just a fancy marketing term, meaning you can shift this gear shift over to the right. You just gotta give it a little pop. And then you can push up or down if you wanna shift those gears manually. It's pretty fun. This thing has some decent horsepower. You get 147 at 5,000 RPMs. And because you don't get a ton of power, it gets a pretty good gas mileage. 30 miles per gallon in the city, 40 on the highway with a combined rating of 34. That's not too bad. Your fuel tank is 13.2 gallons and if you're by me in the Chicago suburbs in the middle of September of 2019, that means you can fill this thing up for about 40 bucks because gas right now is about $3.02 a gallon. And just a quick side note, but man, I love it when I get new vehicles like this because the engine looks, well, it looks so clean. Let me give you a quick taste of what I'm talking about. Here is the engine on my 2012 Prius C. Can you see the difference here? It's, uh, it's pretty striking. So here's the key fob. You have Volkswagen's logo on the back, a couple of buttons on the front, lock, a hatch release, trunk release, and then an unlock button right there. Uh, light plastic, so it doesn't have quite a bit of weight to it, but it feels like it's constructed pretty well. It doesn't feel that flimsy. Uh, the push button start is located right down here by the gear shift, just a small circular button. So let's give it a press. Nice steering wheel setup, uh, soft plastic buttons. They almost have like a rubbery feel to them. You have your cruise controls over here, along with buttons to increase and decrease the volume down here. On the other side, we have buttons to interact with the screen in the center of the gauge cluster, along with track buttons that switch the track or the chapter on whatever you're listening to over the entertainment features in the center console and a nice uh, logo right in the center of the steering wheel. The leather on this is super soft. Um, it's noticeably different than a lot of the other rentals I've been driving. Really comfortable to handle. Gauge cluster is accented in a really nice faint red. I really like this. It makes it kind of a pleasure to look at. RPMs on the left, speedometer on the right, and then you get a fuel gauge down here and a temperature gauge down here. Nice size digital screen in the center with a clock. Tells you what gear you're in and then a trip counter down here. And if you'll notice, just a simple trip counter reset button right here. Now to adjust things in this screen, you just cycle through the buttons here. This cycles through the menu choices and then within each menu structure, you can cycle through a couple of options. Although there's not a ton of information to look at. Let me uh, give you some examples. So I'm pressing this button right here to cycle through the menus. We have, um, the safety technology screen right here so you can turn on and off the blind side detection and rear traffic warnings. Audio screens to show you what's playing over the entertainment features. A telephone screen to show you text messages and phone calls. Uh, and vehicle status screen. Uh, not a whole lot here, just the stop start feature is available and I'll show you that in a second. And then driving data. This is really what has the most screens. So you get miles per hour, uh, warning, you can set sort of a beep if, you're, uh, if you don't want to go above a certain speed. Uh, your oil temperature, your fuel economy, and then your range till empty. So I can actually drive another 305 miles before uh, I run out of fuel. Uh, drive time, I have uh, been driving for a long, long time today. So that is actually, actually accurate. And then uh, some other screens that I never find myself using. This is really the main screen I look at, which is how fast I'm going. And one thing I didn't point out is that you also get uh, a temperature gauge to show you how hot it is outside, and then your um, cruise control indicator light is right here. When cruise is active, I'm just going to turn it on by pressing this button right here. You get this icon, and then also a green icon down here to show you that cruise control is activated. 
On the left hand side we have some pretty simple controls for uh, windows, side view mirrors. Down here kind of tucked behind this storage area is the trunk release. And then down here we have the uh, front hood release, a dial to adjust how the headlights are set, and then a lock and unlock button right here. They actually illuminate. You see how that's turning yellow to show you that the car is locked. Silver door latch, and then your side view mirrors. You do have blind side detection. It's that little icon you see right there on the left side with the two cars. So when someone is in your blind spot, that is going to glow uh, kind of a faint orange. Very similar to this. And then when you uh, turn your turn signal on, and someone is in your blind spot, that's actually going to flash. Uh, which is a nice feature. It just gives you a little bit of added safety and that blind side detection is also available on the uh, passenger side, side view mirror as well. Up top we have a sunroof. This is kind of a mesh-like fabric. It's pretty light. Opens up pretty easily to reveal a nice size sunroof. Up here we have controls to adjust whether or not the uh, lights are going to turn on when we open a door. You can turn the lights on and off manually and then you have another control to actually open up that sunroof and then you have a sunglass holder with kind of a, a rubbery light material in here to give you some uh, just a, a little bit of cushion for your sunglasses. Down below there we have the rear view mirror. No buttons on it of any kind, just the toggle switch. This works fine. And then down below there is where things sort of start getting to be interesting. This is your center display. Um, let me turn it on. Got it connected to Bluetooth audio right now. It is a touch screen, so you can activate each screen by pressing the screen itself. And then you have physical buttons on the right and left to jump to all the important features. Uh, I kind of like this. Uh, the dials right here click really nicely. Uh, so that just gives it kind of a quality feel to it. And there's some additional information on the vehicle here, very similar to what you'd see in the drive information on this screen. But all in all, pretty simple display, but it's got all the basics. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, you can see your fuel economy, and you can adjust things like the radio and other entertainment features. So I like this a lot. Color is also really nice, and the uh, screen resolution is, uh, is pretty top-notch. I also want to point out just real quick, you do get a clock shows that my phone is connected via Bluetooth, that I have some pretty decent battery life on my cell, that I have three, three, four out of four, four out of five bars uh, connecting onto the cellular network, and then I have another uh, temperature gauge showing me that it's 83 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so not too bad. Below there, we have two vents, pretty large. And, you know, usually the plastic for the vents and the cars like this are really, really cheap feeling, but this almost feels like metal. I just point that out because it's kind of an overall thing with this car. Everything is really made out of nice quality materials, which makes it feel a little bit more expensive than it actually is. You also have a hazard button right in the middle, and then your temperature controls down below. Quick, easy buttons to adjust where the vents are blowing or whether or not they're gonna be open to the outside. You also have heated seats with some indicator lights below showing you the intensity of the heated seats, uh, dials to adjust uh, the temperature and the fan, and then uh, some simple buttons right here to adjust everything else along with an on and off button, what I really like. Down below there we have a simple storage cutout. This is where I've been keeping my cell phone. It's got a rubbery feel to it on the bottom so that your phone doesn't slip around. And then you have a USB port right here in a great spot, so if you do need to charge your phone, it's pretty simple to do that. Behind there we have the push button start that I showed you a second ago, another power port, buttons to activate the uh, electronic parking brake, so just pull it up to activate, push it down to deactivate, buttons to turn off the uh, auto stop start feature. What this means is when you do bring the car to a stop, the engine is going to shut off automatically to shave you a little bit of fuel economy, and then a button to turn on and off eco mode. Gear shift itself shifts through the gears really smoothly. This is really comfortable and it's wrapped in leather so it just feels really nice in your hand. And then you also have sport shift capability so if you want to you can adjust the gears manually by popping the gear shift over to the right and then pushing up or down to adjust the gears. One thing I forgot to mention is if you put it in reverse you do get a backup camera. Pretty nice wide view with some guides to help you steer when you're going backwards. Uh, decent screen resolution too. You can actually see the cars way behind me at the Enterprise parking lot I'm in right now. 
Behind there, we have a small storage cutout right here. Let's see if it'll fit my cell phone. Not quite, it's a little bit too small. And this is the Pixel 3a, so it's not a huge phone either. So, not a great spot for your cell. I'm not really sure what you would use this for, to be honest. Two cup holders right here, and then a center armrest, which is pretty wide and has some nice leather on top. Let's open it up. Actually, I haven't opened this thing up at all, so I'm curious to see what's inside. Nice, I like this. It's got a kind of a grayish white material right here. This is just plastic along with a felt lining on the bottom. I don't know, it's pretty striking. It's a nice design choice. Uh, but no power ports or anything, just a large storage area. Let's close that back up. Last thing, glove box. Let's pop this open. Pretty big size. No shelf or any hidden compartments, but it's a big space and plenty of room to keep your owner's manual and your registration materials. All right, I jumped in the back seat and I pushed the driver's seat back the maximum distance. And I tipped it back a little bit too. It's reclining just slightly. And despite that, I still have probably about four inches between the back, my knees and the back of that seat, which is pretty phenomenal. I mean, this is not a huge vehicle and I still have plenty of leg room back here. And uh, I'm six feet tall, by the way. So I'm not super big, uh, but big enough where uh, I'm kind of surprised that I'm so comfortable. Uh, not a whole lot of amenities back here, so no pocket on the driver's side seat, the back of the driver's side seat. You do get a pocket back here. This is a leather material. doesn't have a whole lot of give, so maybe you can get uh, a couple of things in here, but it's not going to hold too much. Also, uh, nothing on the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers, so no vents, no power ports, nothing. Just some blank plastic. Along the doors, we just have our window controls and our door latch. I'm looking, and oddly enough, I do not see a lock and unlock button, which is pretty interesting. So I guess only the front seat passengers have the ability to unlock the doors. It's kind of interesting. Up top, a handle, a little hook to uh, hold your jacket. We also have lights back here with uh, their own individual controls. And then you have the same handle and hook for the other side just noticed someone left me something. There's always at least one thing in each rental I get. And this looks like someone left a DDI World mug. This is plastic, but uh, I don't know. It's a pretty high quality mug. But uh, I will leave it for the next lucky person that rents this Jetta. A couple other things I want to look at. There's a center armrest. It folds down. I have a couple of cup holders here. Nice soft leather. And you also have your car seat anchors. I've never seen this style before. So usually, if the car seat anchors are exposed, there's actually a plastic piece that'll go over here to cover the anchor, but not on this vehicle. So the car seat anchors are always exposed, which is great. That means it'll be really easy to connect a car seat. And, you know, when you're sitting in the seat itself, you don't, you don't feel this, so it doesn't make it uncomfortable. So I'm not sure it's the most attractive way to do that, but uh, at least it's functional. All right, so let's keep things going by uh, popping open the trunk and taking a look at the storage space back here. Now, you actually get a pretty big area, especially compared to some of the other cars in this class. The wheel wells do infringe on the space a little bit, but you still have a pretty decent space to store things back here. So I think you could easily get some golf clubs, a ton of groceries, some suitcases, and whatever else you haul around on a daily basis. I I'm pretty happy with the storage space back here. Also, if you lift up the, uh, the carpeting, the floor of this area, there's also a spare tire under here, along with some tools to change the tire if you do get a flat. And if you need more space, you just pull up on these two levers right here that are actually in the trunk space, and then you can fold down those rear seats pretty easily to reveal an even bigger storage space. So um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the amount of storage room back here. All right, now that we've toured the inside of the vehicle, let's talk about what it's actually like to drive the Jetta. And I want to start with handling because handling is pretty good. Uh, I felt really comfortable at high speeds when I was going around corners and uh, parking this thing as a breeze. It's just super responsive so you know exactly where you're going when you turn that steering wheel, which, if I'm being completely honest, is pretty true of all the sedans nowadays. But you do get a few that feel like they're drifting just a little bit when you don't want them to. Uh, 
Let's also talk about acceleration. The engine sounds great when you slam the accelerator down. I wouldn't consider the Jetta to be a super quick vehicle, but uh, it is pretty fun to drive. You get enough acceleration where you can pass vehicles on the highway easily enough, and you have a little bit of that fun factor, which is all I'm really looking for in a vehicle like this. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is cabin noise. Now, I rented the Jetta only for a single day, but I had an extremely long road trip for work. I had to do five and a half hours. That's round trip time, but still, five and a half hours behind the wheel in a single day. I was kind of worried, because I listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks while I'm driving to help me pass the time, and I hate it when I have to constantly adjust the volume to hear what's being said. But I didn't have to do that on the Jetta. I was pretty impressed with the lack of cabin noise on this vehicle. I don't think I ever had to adjust the volume to hear what was being said, and, um, well, that's a pretty big thing for me. So when it comes to cabin noise, the Jetta gets a big, big thumbs up from me. All right, so that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta SE. I really enjoyed this one. It's actually kind of sad when I had to return it. So with that being said, I don't think you're going to be surprised when I give this one five stars. I'm actually at a loss to find something really bad to criticize about this vehicle. Now, it might not be perfect for you. Maybe you have some different preferences. But all in all, this is a pretty good tar, especially considering it's only about $23,000. Anyway, that's my opinion. If you think differently, please leave me a comment below. I would love to chat with you about it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent my 137th rental car. I'll see you then.